University Assistant Dean for Student Diversity and Inclusion, Alexandra Martinez, is in the country to promote Harvard's Masters in Public Policy and Administration programs. She is joined by Priscilla Ann Hernandez, the Public Affairs Officer at the U.S. Embassy here in Vintook. Good morning, ladies, and welcome to GMN. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning. How are you? We're right. We're right. New Year has started. Priscilla, tell us a little bit about maybe the role of the U.S. Embassy in supporting uh, educational programs uh, and what opportunities exist for Namibians specifically. Oh, my. I don't know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> the most popular thing we have going right now are these online classes, free online classes that anybody who joins the Young African Leaders Initiative Network can take part in, mm -hmm. you know, the YALI, Yali program, President Obama's flagship program. But in addition to that, we have a full-time person at the embassy whose job it is to help anyone who comes into the American Cultural Center to, to, to create a strategic for how they want to pursue U.S. education. Mm -hmm. And he works with them for a year even out on what their goals are, what they want to study. He'll work with universities in the United States mm -hmm. with people like Alexandra mm -hmm. um, who are looking to recruit Namibian students. Alexandra, let's talk a little bit about your portfolio before we get into the master's programs. You are the Assistant Dean for Student Diversity and Inclusion. Yes. Why and what do you do in, in, as, as in, in that portfolio? Well, I would like to start even prior to this recent role, which is approximately three years old. <laughs> I've had 26 years at Harvard Kennedy School, mm -hmm. and all of those years I have focused on admissions and recruitment of students from all over the world mm -hmm. to some of our master's programs and public policy or public administration. We also at the Kennedy School, we have an extremely diverse student body from every corner of the globe, uh, every professional background, every age group. And as such, we're always trying to meet the needs of the students. Mm -hmm. And so the HKS leadership and many of us felt that there was a need for an office for student diversity and inclusion to help prepare our students as they go back into a very global society mm -hmm to be able to understand and appreciate the need for diversity and inclusion. Okay. Obviously, Harvard University is, you know, it's worldwide. Um, and sometimes, maybe as Namibians, they don't think they have access to this. So, Priscilla, how do people make this a reality? Oh, it's so easy. <coughs> you first have to take the step of either going to our Facebook page or coming, walking into the American Cultural Center or any of our American spaces across the country and just say, here's me. Introduce yourself, meet us, we can start a dialogue about what do you want to study, exactly what is your experience, do you want to, do you need English language top off? We have mm -hmm. an English language fellow who can work with you. How do you write an essay? What are you looking to do? We have someone who will help you take the tests that you need to learn how to take and mm -hmm. help prepare you for some of the, the rigors of what yeah. it takes to get into a U.S. university. Uh, I definitely know in terms of those rigors. But tell us, what are some of the advantages uh, of wanting to pursue a master's in public policy and administration from Harvard University? Well, at Harvard Kennedy School, we are the global leader in preparing and empowering those individuals who are interested in advancing the public good our professors at the school who are uh, well-renowned around the world in the areas of expertise and they're also practitioners mm -hmm. and our students as I previously mentioned who come from every part of the world every professional background and every age group and we'll, we have students at the Kennedy School who are committed to wanting to make the world a better place mm -hmm. By the time you graduate from any of our programs at Harvard Kennedy School, you will possess the skills that are needed as an effective manager, to be an effective leader. You'll also possess the analytical skills which are needed to help prepare you to make the world a better place. Well, wow, that sounds uh, like a good pitch. <laughs> Priscilla, obviously, you know, uh, institutions like Harvard come at a cost. Um, uh, and that could be a limiting factor, but how can we address these shortcomings or these financial gaps? What, what financial opportunities exist for Namibian students? I'm glad you asked that question because I think one of the, the things I find for people who are ambitious and, and really want to go somewhere is they don't think in terms of limitations, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the keys. Mm -hmm. You have to know that you can do it one way or the other, and that's where we come in. Mm -hmm. We can help match you to resources. If you are a good student, you ha are dedicated, you'll take the steps necessary, there are institutions out there that will help fund your education. Mm -hmm. And as long as you keep an open mind, if you come in and tell us, 
I want to study public management, we will help identify schools in the United States that are willing to help you cover costs. And we work with groups like NASFAP to mm -hmm. help offset as well. And so you get the little bits of uh, pots of money from different sources. You can do it. You know you can. And, I, and obviously also through the Fulbright program, yes. uh, you could apply to, 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 to go to Harvard. Fulbright is one of our flagship programs as well and very popular for anyone who wants to pursue an, either an undergraduate or a master's mm -hmm. degree. But we also have the Humphrey program that not mm -hmm. a lot of people know about, specifically targeting mid-career people who don't necessarily feel they need a degree and study for two years, but maybe they can do 10 months. Go to the U.S., do some okay. research, build your network, get that specialized skill set. You've already, it, you're already in your career and you know you just need a little bit more either mm -hmm. in technology, in public management, in any field. And that's one that to be quite honest, we don't get enough Namibian yeah. applicants for. Wow. Okay, let's talk about the requirements for this program. What do you need to have in order to uh, be admitted to such a program? Well, as I previously mentioned, we're looking for students, first and foremost, who want to make the world a better place and advance the public good. So as our former President Kennedy uh, said, the first thing that I would ask a prospective applicant is to ask what you can do. Mm -hmm. What do you feel you can do to make the world a better place? And then we look for students who already show evidence of leadership skills, that commitment, that passionate commitment to making a difference, whether it be in your city, your country, or around the world. Mm -hmm. We're looking for students who are academically talented and for the diversity in the classroom. And by diversity, we're talking in the broadest sense, where in the world do you come from, what professional background, just across the board that you add to the diversity okay. at the school. Obviously, Priscilla, we've heard, or we've had Namibians, you know, they've gone to institutions like Harvard and other places. What are some of the comments you hear when, once they've come back and they've reintegrated themselves? I mean, what is the value of the experience, is my question. I'm glad you uh, asked that. You know, we do a lot of programs with alumni, people who have gone to programs and come back. We had one just the other day that the mm -hmm. ambassador hosted at his house. And one of the things that you hear consistently is how it changed their lives. Mm -hmm. And more importantly for us, it's not just that it affected that one person, but what it does for everyone around their circle, all of their siblings or cousins or everybody. And, and I think one of the things that we see is that a lot of times people almost immediately move up the, the line. They, mm. they, be, they go quickly into leadership positions because they have broadened their horizons mm. and, and they've become voracious readers and writers and, and their skill sets have just exponentially improved even over the space of a short yeah. one-year program. So it's like a multiplier effect is, exactly. is explosive. <laughs> exactly. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, recently maybe I had a report in terms of, you know, the lack of human capacity, especially when it comes to public institutions, how there is this, you know, human resource gap. How do, in the term long run, uh, graduates that come out of your program end up affecting things like national development? What are some of the responses that you hear from Harvard graduates uh, once they reintegrated into um, public institutions? Well, I would first have to start with your first response mm. that in all of the years that I uh, communicate with alums after they leave the school many years later and some more recently, that they feel it's been a life-changing experience. And as I mentioned earlier, the skills that they acquire are really meant to be applied to any profession that they end up in. And so we are a school of public policy, so we also prepare our students to be effective uh, change makers and policy uh, makers mm -hmm. and have good governance skills. And so our students, by the time they finish, especially with the negotiation skills, which we're known for in the leadership, um, the po policy courses, management courses, it enables them to make effective change in whatever area they choose mm -hmm. to pursue. Well, that, 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 that sounds uh, like, an, like an incredible response. Uh, Priscilla, I think a lot of people are intimidated by Harvard. <laughs> uh, you know, they don't think that maybe they're good enough to go there. How do you change that perception in, 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 or how do you even prepare yourself? Because, uh, you know, getting into American universities requires a little more than maybe than just getting into other graduate schools. So what type of perception is required to get into a place like Harvard? 
Well, first of all, you have to, again, I go back to the same thing. Don't think in terms of, of limitations. Yeah. We have many people, in fact, even diplomats, who will tell you, I didn't, you know, in, in the U.S., mm. anybody can be a diplomat. Mm. As long as you prepare yourself and you take the tests and you learn the communication skills and you, you sort of just develop your own personal growth, then you can achieve. And I say the same thing about anyone who's aspiring to be a U.S. university student or a master's degree or graduate um, degree mm -hmm. student. Just don't th think in terms of limitations. Come in, let us work with you, create a strategic plan to get you from point A to point B, and you will do it. You'll do it. <laughs> what is your message to, uh, to Namibians who might be aspiring to get to Harvard and make the dreams come true? That it is very doable. I meet students from around the world and even in the U.S. when they think about Harvard University, they're in awe and they think for others perhaps, but it can't happen for me. And I think one of the roles that I've played over the years is convincing people that if you really want something and you're willing to work at it, uh, it is not easy, but doable if you're willing to do your homework and, and just get as much information as you get from our website. Uh, take advantage of my being in Namibia. Mm -hmm. And it may not be the first year, but if you're really committed and this is your dream, just start the action plan and it could become a dream come true for you. Okay. As the public relations officer, why is it important uh, that you bring people like Alexander to Namibia to support such initiatives? Why is it important for the U.S. Embassy here in Winter? It's twofold. Okay. One, because it gives Namibians a chance to have face-to-face -face contact. She's not so scary <laughs> <laughs> when you meet her. She's yeah. really a lovely person. Um, but also because it enlightens her. It enlightens the people who are in the United States looking at the applications when they can actually see the context of, you know, read the headlines, participate in, you know, watch the talk shows, talk to people who have been or are aspiring to go. Mm -hmm. She's been meeting with so many people at the universities, academicians, students, um, parents of students, mm -hmm. that I think it helps inform both sides about um, how the linkages really are possible and it's really just about people to people. Okay, and how does this heighten your experience in terms of you know, the admissions process working, coming in as assistant dean, coming to places like Namibia, what's the value for you? Well, Harvard Kennedy School is invested in increasing the number of students in the entire continent. And so during this trip, I'm not only visiting Namibia, I just uh, recently returned from Zambia, Zimbabwe, and on Sunday I will depart to Angola. Mm -hmm. And so the continent is huge. I've been to around 17 countries here wow. and so many more to go, but most importantly, Africa is an extremely important continent and Harvard Kennedy School is investing in wanting to play a role in preparing the future leaders of the continent. Okay. Priscilla, final remarks? Final words to the nation about how they can position themselves to, to good quality education? I would say if you are even remotely interested, friend us on Facebook, walk into our any of our American spaces, mm -hmm. just keep an open mind about everything that's out there. and. Again, as uh, Alexandra said, public policy is one of those things that will help develop a nation. And it's not about, you know, which side of the fence you're on. You know, we've got U.S. Mm. elections going on, so we talk <laughs> a lot about that uh, right now. But basically that you're just broadening your horizons mm. and always keeping an open mind so that you can explore new opportunities. Um, public policy is definitely not something that, you know, when you're at school as a career choice that's put out there. You know, it's more you have to become a lawyer or an engineer or an accountant, at least in the Namibian scope of it. Um, but obviously we see the need for public institutions in terms of service delivery and in terms of being effective. So from a public policy perspective, why is this course so important, especially towards developing nations, in conclusion? Well, in order to make effective change and to improve the situation in many of the nations around the world, you have to understand policy. Everything, every, regardless of what your profession is, policy touches every aspect of our lives. And over the years, I've all, also heard from many who thought that if you're interested in policy, that means you want to be a lawyer or you may want to go to the government. We now recognize and 
share the message with all of our prospective applicants that policy touches every aspect of our lives and therefore you could benefit regardless of whether you're in the nonprofit sector an elected official or uh, working in an international organization everything is affected by policy around us thank you very much ladies for making time out to come see us here on German thank you Patrick, thank you, Patrick. Policy affects all of our lives, especially public policy. Those are the words of Ms. Alexandra Martinez, who is the assistant dean at Harvard University School of um, the Kennedy School of Government, as well as Priscilla Hernandez, the public relations officer here at the U.S. Embassy. So, Namibia, if you have dreams about going out there and studying further in terms of postgraduate, Harvard is a choice. Go to any U.S. Embassy and find out more information. How stunning. Stay with us. This is German.